my name is Geert Jan, and what you are attending is, of course, um, the Coimbra Jug meeting, but at the same time, this is part of a jug tour that we are doing with Fuji. And very briefly, what is Fuji? Fuji stands for Friends of Open JDK. Uh, my name and is It stands for Friends of Open JDK. You can go to fuj.io and you will see the website. It's a site that exists to promote the Open JDK. All the different Open JDK distributions are promoted via the site. Um, but it's more than that. Um, so we're doing this jug tour around um, Java 17. And there's a whole program. And this is one stop in that program. Um, but what you'll find on the Fuji site as well is because there is now the Java 17 release, you'll find all the information about that release. So a list of features, but also a list of the fixes that have gone into this particular release, as well as a description of who Fuji is. So there is an advisory board with different Java tech organizations, Azul and Datadog and Datastax and Gluon, and Hazelcast and JFrog and Payara and Sneak, you are all involved in this project. Um, and there is a blog page, and every day there's a new article by somebody, and it could be you, anyone can participate in this. Um, and there are many people involved, so here are some of the many well-known people and less well-known people. Um, you see Matt Rabel in here, you see Johan Voss in here, you see Eva Grimstad, many people. Um, what we're also doing is promoting the OpenJDK by means of this badge. So there are many projects out there that are making use of Java, that are on GitHub, for example, um, and no one knows that they're actually using the OpenJDK. So one example of that is, for example, um, Okta. So if you go to the um, Okta SDK Java page on GitHub, you will see that there is this badge here that has been added very recently, works with OpenJDK. So what we're trying to achieve is that this badge is put on as many different GitHub projects as possible to show that, hey, the OpenJDK is being used here. Um, and so information about that is also on this site. So if you, are, if you have projects on GitHub that are using Java in some way, please promote Java on your page by means of this common badge um, for that purpose. And there's a GitHub repository for that. Um, and finally, there's also a podcast. And in a recent podcast, you'll hear Johan speaking, um, as well as uh, James Gosling. So in um, the second podcast about Embedded Java, you'll see, um, I think the, it's the most recent presentation where you'll find um, James Gosling as well. So talking about Java embedded uh, stuff. So that's a very brief overview of what Fuji is about. It's a community, get involved. Um, there's a blog, there's new content every day. It's a place for anyone who cares about Java and wants to promote it um, in a vendor neutral way. So we're not promoting any specific company or any specific open JDK. We're promoting all companies and all open JDK distributions here. It's a community site for everybody. So that's it. Um, and with that brief introduction, um, let me hand over to Johan um, for his um, talk that is part of this tour. Thank you. Hello, Johan. There. Hi. Yeah. Oh. I'm. Uh, can I already share my screen? Sure. Okay. And actually, Gail, who is on the call here, is also been contributing to Fuji. So, uh, what's what's your experience been, uh, Gail, with uh, Fuji? Um, well, uh, I was able to contribute a a three part article on my experiences with um, creating a a mobile app, uh, a little game that runs both on. Uh, iPhone and also iOS and with the same exact source code. So using uh, Gluon, uh, Graal VM, um, it, it, I was able to upload these uh, apps, this app to the app stores. And so the article just kind of goes through the steps that I took to do that. 
Awesome. Yeah, it's a great series. And um, Barry, um, he's on here, contributed some content to the events calendar. So if anyone here is running events at any point, there's a community calendar that you can add content to. So really anything you want to contribute in the Java community, just let people know. There's a Slack channel, of course, there's a Twitter. Um, so with that, over to, uh, to Johan. OK, thank you, uh, yes, John, and uh, thank you, uh, Robert, for inviting me. Um, I, I was actually on the plane, and then I realized, oh, no, it's uh, uh, remote, so I went uh, back. Uh, no, that's not who. Um, but uh, Portugal has a very high vaccination uh, uh, rate, so um, yeah, that sounds uh, pretty safe over there. I think we are in the top of the world right now, number one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Congrats for that. That's uh, that's good. Um, so uh, yeah, this talk is about uh, um, Java and uh, quantum computing. Um, I had another talk uh, I think the day before yesterday about um, Java FX, um, and to me they are actually about the same. But I probably need a few more hours and a few more beers to uh, discuss the philosophy of uh, one platform to rule them all. But um, the the bottom line, um, or one of the uh, bottom lines, is that um, as a Java developer, um, you can do a lot. And most Java developers are uh, working in uh, backend applications, uh, server side applications, and that's great. But you should be aware that with the language that you know and the skills that you learned, that you can do a lot and that you're future proof in many different areas. You can work on uh, desktop applications, embedded uh, systems, mobile devices, or you can work on uh, quantum computing. Uh, so the reason that I have Java records here is uh, because, well, this is not uh, new in uh, Java 17, but it's one of the things that I've been experimenting with recently uh, for some integration in uh, quantum computing. It's not, uh, um, uh, I'm not very excited about it yet, but um, it's, uh, um, there are some uh, work in the pipeline. Um, I will give an outline here about what I plan to uh, present, but it's always difficult to talk about uh, this uh, topic, quantum computing and uh, uh, Java. Typically, when, when you give talk about uh, Spring or so, you can say that uh, I expect everyone to at least have downloaded Spring once, and, um, and maybe uh, I will then talk about new features in version X or Y or so, but with Quantum computing, it can it can really go all ways, and the background of the uh, audience is uh, very uh, varying. And um, especially with uh, uh, online presentations, it's hard to see how many people are uh, uh, frowning or uh, or uh, already asleep. Uh, so in real life presentations, I can see if I need to go faster or slower or uh, make uh, less jokes uh, or so. But um, uh, I'm probably one of the few speakers that uh, still enjoys uh, uh, virtual presentations. It's, uh, um, yeah, I, 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 I see lots of benefits uh, about it, so I, I like it. So what I would suggest here is that if, uh, if you have a question, um, just put it in the chat. Um, occasionally reading uh, the chat, um, and I might be able to answer the question immediately, or just based on the questions, I can also see um, that I may be putting too much uh, focus on, uh, on physics and not enough on uh, mathematics or whatever. So you can um, guide me uh, with the questions. And um, I will not answer all questions immediately because sometimes the question, uh, well, sometimes I know that I will come back to that uh, uh, topic later. So, uh, but it definitely doesn't hurt to, um, to ask or to give feedback uh, while I'm presenting. So most talks about quantum computing start with uh, the quantum physics. Um, and then after five minutes, uh, nobody is uh, following anymore. Um, so I try to do it differently. I, I, I want to start from high level uh, classical computing. So the, the, the software development that we all uh, know. Um, and then we go to how is this high level uh, computing implemented on a low level. And then we make the, 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 the quantum uh, leap to low level quantum computing. And then we go back to high level quantum computing. Actually this, this, this arrow is one of the standard uh, shapes in PowerPoint. So I, I decided to, <clears throat> to go this way. That's, um, that's easier for me. 
because I can't draw new arrows. Um, so having said that, um, I have to, uh, um, oh yeah, so I, uh, I'm the author of uh, Quantum Computing in Action, which is uh, a, a book that's going to, it's currently in uh, MEEP, which is the Manning Early Access Program. Um, so the ebook is available um, and uh, it's a live book uh, uh, at the moment, uh, I think. So you can give comments there and I read the comments uh, or I uh, uh, reply. And the paper version is scheduled to be um, released in um, a few weeks, uh, I hope. Um, so uh, you can, uh, with the, the code I have here, uh, you have a 35% discount. Uh, I think it's some old products. I got a mail yesterday from uh, Manning about it. So if you follow that link and you uh, apply that code, then you get a uh, 35% discount, not only on uh, this book, but on I think on all Manning books, but I'm not sure. So don't kill me if that's uh, uh, not the case. Um, I use, in this presentation, I will use a number of uh, um, graphics that I took uh, uh, from the book. Uh, so it's uh, um, it's not that I'm, um, well, giving uh, a short version of the book here, but uh, some of the graphics uh, I've taken from uh, uh, book, so you can you can read more uh, there. Um, but uh, well, if you want, of course. So I've I've been working with Java in 1995. I joined the Blackdown uh, uh, team very early, which uh, uh, with which we ported uh, Java to Linux because Sun Microsystems said in 95 that nobody wants to use Java on Linux, so we did it ourselves. Um, I'm currently the co-lead of OpenJFX, uh, the, where we uh, work on the Java UI specification and implementation. I'm the lead of the OpenJDK uh, mobile uh, sub-project of OpenJDK. Uh, I'm a, a Java champion and uh, one of the authors of uh, the um, definite guide to modern Java clients with JavaVex, and then also the author of this quantum computing book. I'm a co-founder of Bluon. So, um, uh, that's where I uh, work or um, write code. And so, uh, and with Gloom, we uh, uh, work on the uh, Java end to end uh, enterprise. So, Java on mobile embedded connected to um, backend systems. And so, and I'm the creator of Strange and Strange FX, which are quantum computing applications uh, uh, in Java. And you can follow me in Twitter. I will give some links to Strange and Strange FX later. So, um, let's start with uh, uh, some code. Um, the, the typical um, in classical computing, if you uh, create an application uh, in Java, this is uh, uh, what you uh, write. Well, this is not what you write, but uh, something similar is what you write. Um, this is um, actually, this is taken from one of the Java text classes, I think the choice uh, dialogue. So this is, this is Java code. This is um, readable uh, for um, those who have a bit of background in uh, uh, Java. Um, and that's, uh, um, um, you can, um, well, if, if, if you know the topic, you can understand uh, this. And uh, um, if, uh, um, if you work in a financial software, you would probably have different, uh, uh, different Java code, but you would understand that uh, Java code because it's, it's at a high level. Um, it's a, a, a human in uh, a language that uh, a human can understand well. If we go one layer uh, below the Java source code, we have the Java bytecode. So the, the Java bytecode for the um, snippet I showed um, is uh, shown here, um, or at least a part of that uh, Java bytecode. So that already looks uh, um, a bit less um, easy to read. Um, and um, I don't know how many people are um, regularly uh, looking at uh, uh, the Java bytecode they generate. Um, I don't do it often. I sometimes do it because I work on compilers and so as well. And then um, it's uh, interesting to, to know uh, what is happening. But it's something that um, as a Java developer, you're typically uh, not worried about. Um, the majority of the Java developers uh, uh, only interact with bytecode when they get a compiler error that um, uh, this version cannot uh, work with uh, bytecode level 58 uh, or so. But the, the details, uh, like what you see here, those are typically hidden for Java developers. But we can go 
even uh, lower, and we can translate this Java bytecode into machine code. This is then specific for a um, uh, uh, specific architecture or um, uh, operating system or a combination. And um, yeah, clearly this is something that as a high level developer, you want to avoid. Uh, you don't want to be, uh, you, you don't want to uh, know what is actually uh, happening here. Um, you just want your application to work uh, fine without uh, um, uh, the uh, without understanding what's uh, um, uh, yeah what, what what those numbers actually uh, mean we can even go one layer uh, lower oops and then um, we are at the uh, at the level of bits so this is uh, uh, the uh, typically the lowest level and the one that uh, a high level developer never interacts uh, uh, with um, to be honest, um, this is uh, uh, something that I quickly generated with uh, J shell. So this is a uh, purely random uh, zeros and ones. So this is not the uh, the choice dialogue code from the sample before. I I I was wondering if I should really go to the to the to the binary level, but then I didn't have time to do it. So I just faked this. But uh, I'm too honest to uh, to pretend as a this is, a, this is the representation of the Java source code that you saw first, but I don't think anyone will blame me for this. So this is this is bits, and this is something that um, um, you don't interact with typically, but it is there, and it is actually what powers all your application. And in classical computing, um, we uh, create algorithms that, at the lowest level, will um, just process those bits by applying gates uh, to it. And a typical gate is the not gate. And what you see here is uh, uh, an example of if, if we have a bit with value zero and we apply a not gate, then the, resulting, uh, the result is that this bit has now a value of uh, uh, zero. If I said the initial value is zero, I actually meant the initial value is one. So uh, how does that work? We have an input bit uh, one, and after applying the gate, the output is zero. We have an input bit zero, and after applying the gate, the output bit is one. Um, so what if our input uh, is a combination of uh, one and zero? So if our input bit is uh, um, both one and zero, what's then the output? And so this is where the confusion starts um, because people say, no, no, it has to be zero or one. But um, that, is, that is the case in the um, actually super artificial uh, infrastructure that we created and that we call a transistor. Um, but in nature, uh, things aren't that digital. And I will, I will keep the, the amount of uh, um, physics um, pretty low uh, here. Um, um, but if you have more questions about it, you can, um, you can, you can, you can ask it, of course. I also talk about it uh, um, uh, uh, in a little more detail in the book, um, but the, the focus is, is really on the consequences for developers. The book is, by the way, called, today it's called Quantum Computing in Action. It used to be called uh, Quantum Computing for Java Developers, but then they renamed it in Quantum Computing for Developers uh, from a Java perspective or so, and now it's Quantum Computing in Action. It's uh, um, the, uh, yeah, that's the uh, running marketing team, I think, that uh, um, is still experimenting with uh, what the uh, most appropriate uh, title is. Um, so um, a little bit about the, um, the quantum physics. And the relevant part, uh, or at least one of the relevant parts that I want to highlight now is that in nature, um, there are some elementary particles with properties that cannot be expressed as, uh, as binaries. So uh, that is that cannot be expressed as a zero or a one. And these particles are actually very interesting uh, to us because we can use them in, in our quantum computers, and we call them uh, a qubit. There are different ways how uh, this can be physically realized. And I'm not going over the details, but let's give one example 
an electron uh, has a spin and it can have a spin up or uh, 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 or uh, the spin can point up, up or down and it's uh, uh, related to the angular momentum um, but the relevant uh, uh, the relevant point is that at a given moment you do not know if the spin is up or down you only know that there is um, x person chance that if we would measure the spin now that it will uh, point up and then there's of course 100 minus x person chance that if we would measure it it will uh, be uh, spin down so that is not to say that the spin is in a uh, in a position that we don't know yet it is really in a superposition of those uh, two states and that is something that uh, is often very hard to to grasp and um, if you don't understand that then don't worry uh, nor do i i think with uh, uh, with with our brains this is uh, something that's very very difficult to to understand um, the quantum theory goes much beyond this of course and um, it goes toward um, well, the, uh, the, the main idea of quantum computing is that um, everything is uh, about probabilities and that the reality is uh, um, seen as one probability uh, of a total set of probabilities. And then you have different interpretations like the Copenhagen interpretation uh, versus the uh, many worlds interpretation. But that's, um, um, I think, extremely interesting and I highly encourage you to, uh, to read uh, about it, or there are some excellent YouTube uh, uh, channels uh, talking about this. But for us, the, that is less relevant for us as developers. So I try to, um, uh, well, at least today, I try to stay away from the physical consequences of this, which, which are really mind boggling. And it's uh, sometimes hard uh, for me not to, um, well, to try to think about the, the real time, uh, the real, uh, real world uh, or virtual world consequences. But so we're not going to do that. Now we um, stick to the relevant parts, which is that the qubit, which is um, the conceptual representation of a particle that is part of a two state system can be in state zero it can be in state one or it can be in a superposition state where it is actually a linear combination of zeros uh, of, of a zero and a one. And there is some discussion about uh, a quantum computer um, uh, scientists. Some say that uh, uh, it is zero and one at the same time and others will shoot you if you say that. I think it all depends on uh, how do you find uh, time and uh, uh, the same moment and so, but it's really important to, um, to realize that, um, be, that this quantum uh, superposition state is not a random number. So it's not that this is uh, some random number that we don't know yet. No, it is really a combination of zero and uh, one. And that is important because that actually means that in a qubit um, it, that can hold the zero state and the one state at the same moment. So that means that with one qubit, we can represent two possible values. And in classical computing, one bit obviously can only hold one value. A bit is zero or a bit is one. You can change a bit from zero to one, but at a given moment, a bit can only hold one uh, value. And if we uh, extend that a bit, then for example, in eight, uh, 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 eight bits in uh, classical computing can still hold one value at the same time. But eight uh, qubits in quantum computing can hold 256 values, two to the power of eight. Uh, well, because two bits can hold four values and then of course eight bits can hold 256 values. And this is uh, uh, one of the reasons. And uh, um, so the only reason that I'm going to tackle now, I'm not going to talk about entanglement. And so, because um, uh, that would probably be too much for um, uh, one hour, but this is one of the main reasons why Quantum computers uh, are interesting um, to, uh, for a number of uh, problems because we can, um, we can work with many, uh, a huge amount of uh, possible input scenarios at once. Whereas in classical computing, if you want to do something with the 256 
possible values of those eight bits, we have to first process uh, all zeros, and then we have to process uh, the uh, seven zero bits and then one uh, one bit, and then uh, and and so that takes two hundred fifty six evaluations. But a quantum computer and um, can um, more or less uh, evaluate all those combinations um, together. Uh, again, so this is something that is um, uh, that I say as a computer scientist, not as a, a physicist, because it's not entirely correct what I'm saying. And uh, I know that uh, some physicists, for very good reasons, uh, would uh, almost kill me if I say that the quantum uh, computer is doing. <laughs> Sorry. So, so uh, uh, if I if I would say that a quantum computer is same doing. Same, same everything in, in, in parallel, then um, uh, that, that, is, that is not the case. So, um, but it, I think it often helps understanding why a quantum computer is uh, uh, um, applicable for some areas because, uh, because of this. So that's why uh, problems that scale exponentially uh, can often better be tackled by a quantum, by a quantum computer. And um, as you can see here that the, the power of a quantum computer grows exponentially, so it can deal with problems that grow exponentially uh, as well. So, how does this? Uh, 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 how can we um, uh, show this on a uh, um, on a time uh, time versus complexity? No, uh, sorry, number of bits versus complexity uh, uh, scale. Um, the the uh, I, I just added this. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, figure uh, while Gert Jan was uh, uh, speaking. So um, I have to see what I say here. Okay, yeah. So uh, this, this is showing the, uh, the time complexity. So if we add some uh, bits, um, how long will it take to, um, uh, to process a given problem? And the problem that we are uh, processing here is uh, factoring integers which is one of the most common problem uh, when, when people talk about quantum computing, they often talk about Shor's algorithm, uh, breaking encryption, and, uh, uh, and, and uh, the main ingredient for breaking encryption is um, how fast can we factor an integer into uh, two prime numbers. And then you see that with the, uh, the blue line, which shows the classical approach, um, you see that that can work very fast for um, a small number of bits. But the moment that we increase the number of bits, um, the, the time required for doing this becomes exponentially larger. And you see that um, at a given uh, moment, uh, it's, uh, it becomes extremely hard to, to crack uh, uh, a code using this approach because if we only add one bit, then the time required to um, to, uh, to crack that code is, is doubling uh, or well sort of uh, 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 doubling. And um, this, this, this behavior is uh, uh, unfortunately um, more understood now by uh, humans uh, because the um, uh, uh, pandemic uh, situation in which a virus uh, uh, can also um, reproduce uh, in an exponential uh, way. So, People realized uh, the hard way the hard way that exponential functions can uh, um, um, can hit uh, very fast and, and and they are extremely powerful, um, but they can be uh, well powerful in a good way or a bad way. But so this exponential uh, function here is actually showing the the time it will it it takes uh, a classical algorithm to crack um, RSA keys. And then the uh, orange line is the time it takes for a quantum algorithm, which, uh, which is called Shor's algorithm. Um, it, it, takes a, uh, it, it shows the time it takes to, um, to uh, solve that problem using a, that quantum algorithm on a quantum computer. And you see that, of course, when we add more bits, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it becomes a bit uh, harder, but it doesn't become exponentially uh, harder. So that means that um, it, is, it is still doable, um, even if we increase, if for security reasons, the keys are doubled, then the, um, yeah, then the time might be doubled as well. And that's annoying for a hacker, but it's not a showstopper. Whereas for um, uh, classical algorithms, 
if, for example, if you double from, um, and the values are uh, bogus here, but if you would double from uh, 80K uh, to uh, 160K, yeah, you see that the, the time goes from zero to uh, eternally. So um, this, is, this is something that's impossible uh, with classical computers. So this is just uh, one example of uh, um, why a quantum computer um, might um, be extremely relevant uh, in the, in the uh, uh, future. But it's, uh, uh, it's uh, one of the most popular examples. And um, I, I, I don't think you should be worried about uh, uh, it for the next uh, few years. Um, but um, it's, it's definitely worth thinking about it because uh, if you want to, um, uh, to protect yourself from quantum computers breaking encryption, you can start thinking now about how is it working? How can I avoid it? And, uh, um, and implementing it in your software. So it's, it's, it's not just uh, um, science fiction or something. Oh yeah, in the, in the far future, this will be, this will be useful. Um, think about the millennium bug, the Y2K problem where um, we knew when it was going to happen and uh, people had to uh, prepare uh, uh, in advance uh, for this uh, millennium, millennium uh, bug. You, you, don't, you didn't want to wait until December 31 to, um, uh, to fix your software. So I think something similar uh, might happen now with uh, uh, encryption. Um, I have to be honest that uh, this, uh, uh, there's no such thing as free exponential computing power. Um, and, uh, um, and, and it's definitely not something that a quantum computer will um, be able to, if you have a stream dot parallel, uh, uh, to execute all those uh, things uh, uh, in, in, in parallel and give you the results. No, the, um, the uh, annoying thing is that um, we can work with superposition during uh, all kinds of computations, but once we measure uh, the status of a qubit, it will fall back to one of the basis states, to zero or to one. And uh, not only that qubit, but everything that is related to it. So you have you can only measure a, a quantum system once, and then it will be um, it will be classical again. So um, you can um, it's like in those uh, fairy tales that uh, uh, if you if you if you look back, then you lose uh, uh, everything or, uh, or 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 something uh, like that. So all the powers uh, of uh, uh, being in superposition and, and doing lots of those computations on different values uh, simultaneously is gone the moment that you measure something. So people then often ask, okay, I have one input uh, value and I have one output value. It's uh, nice that I can do lots of things, uh, uh, computations with different value, but what's, what's the point? Well, the point is that, um, and, and, and the, uh, the challenge in creating quantum algorithms is that you have to try to come up with uh, a processing algorithm that um, modifies your input in such a way that the uh, outcome, the single outcome that you have, or well, single one qubit will have one outcome, uh, that, that, that is going to be, that, that is going to tell you something about the problem that you're uh, trying to solve. And, um, and again, an analogy that is uh, um, that's not entirely uh, a correct an analogy is that uh, if you have, uh, um, for example, um, uh, 100 numbers that are given to you and you need to find the, the biggest number, then the outcome is only uh, one index. So even if the output of a program can only be one value, that single value can tell you a lot about um, uh, about your problem. And actually the way that Shor's algorithm works, uh, the, the, the integer factorization is it shifts the problem from finding uh, the uh, factors of an integer into finding the periodicity of an exponential modular, fun of a, a modular exponential function, uh, which you can mathematically prove that those are related. And uh, um, I think in the book I, um, I, I give sort of the uh, proof for that, but it's a, it's a totally different problem, but it is, but uh, if you um, can solve one, you can solve the other. And it turns out that finding the periodicity of such a function 
uh, can be done rather easily on a quantum uh, computer. So um, with the algorithm that we do there, there's one outcome which is directly related to the periodicity of the function. So after that uh, step, we can go back to the original problem and then um, show the uh, uh, or process the uh, the result. So um, that I uh, I know that that may sound uh, um, a bit uh, uh, confusing uh, in the beginning, and it's 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 really hard to uh, to cramp everything in uh, in one session. Uh, so I'm always interested in feedback, but I hope that you get the point here that a quantum computer can do lots of processing, but you will only measure. Uh, you can only make a single measurement. So you need to think about how can I write my algorithm so that measurement, I maybe have to combine different values uh, so that uh, positives and negative cancel or that uh, the desired outcome is uh, amplified. And so that is, that is the, the key to creating uh, quantum uh, algorithms then. Um, what are the typical applications uh, uh, that uh, uh, people talk about or uh, that, that, that might be working uh, 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 well in, in the future? Well, integer factorization, I already mentioned that. Uh, optimization problems, uh, traffic salesmen, uh, for example, that is something that the quantum computer um, uh, would be good at as well, because that's also a problem that scales uh, um, the, the more points you have the harder the problem becomes in a uh, traditional uh, way. Searching through unstructured data is also something that uh, uh, is popular on, uh, in quantum computing uh, uh, applications. And then uh, chemical uh, problems or physical uh, problems, uh, the three body problem, for example, there are so, uh, and, and for example, in uh, chemistry, and I don't know anything about uh, chemistry, I, um, I, I, I never was uh, good in it, but um, I, I was always frustrated that um, we had to learn so much uh, just out of uh, our head because I knew that there were a few fundamental equations, uh, quantum, uh, 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 quantum physics and uh, uh, relativity theory. Um, but how comes that we still need to learn uh, by head so many things about chemical uh, structures? And so, well, yeah, that is because the, even though we know the equations, uh, doing those calculations is extremely uh, hard and not always uh, solvable uh, in an analytical uh, way. So that's why you have to go with approximations and uh, boundary element uh, methods uh, and so. But with uh, quantum computing, we can uh, simulate nature by nature itself. And um, many of the problems in uh, uh, chemistry, physics and healthcare then can be um, tackled more efficiently by um, using the building blocks of nature. Because if we want to understand what is happening um, inside the structure, uh, how are the um, electrons uh, reacting to each other and so, then if we can simulate the same setup with different uh, 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 particles, but with particles with the same properties, then it becomes much, um, much easier to, um, to to tackle the problem, because we um, we uh, we we know what um, particles are involved in chemical and physical problems, and we can simulate uh, them with uh, qubits, and uh, that will um, I really believe that this will uh, ultimately uh, create a huge leap forward in our understanding of uh, nature with um, lots of uh, new um, inventions and uh, uh, applications uh, uh, in, the, um, yeah, in different uh, areas. So um, we talked about uh, qubits, but how do we um, process uh, qubits? So we are now in the, um, so we, um, we started uh, uh, high, then we went low level classical computing, and now we are going to, um, start our climb towards uh, high level uh, programming again. Um, <clears throat> so if, 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 uh, um, if, if, if you want me to go faster, slower, or talk uh, uh, less more about this, then um, just, uh, uh, just let me know. Um, 
the qubits can be manipulated uh, similar as how bits are manipulated with uh, uh, gates, um, which are typically uh, um, based on transistors. Qubits can be manipulated as well uh, using even more sophisticated hardware. I mean, uh, a transistor is a fantastic piece of uh, uh, electronics, but um, for qubits, we need something even more sophisticated. And typically in, uh, well, in, in, in many uh, physical representations, uh, lasers are used to um, change the state of uh, qubits. So that's how qubits are programmed. And um, doing so, a number of um, basic operations on qubits can be defined. And those basic operations corres correspond again with um, uh, gates. For example, the NOT gate, that we showed uh, in the classical example, existing the quantum uh, example as well. And uh, um, the, uh, well, but that, then it's a, a quantum uh, uh, not gate also called the poly, poly X uh, uh, gate. It will change the, uh, it will swap the uh, probabilities of a qubit. So if a qubit was in the zero state, applying the, uh, uh, Poly X gate or the quantum not gate will bring that qubit in a one state. And a qubit that was in the one state will, uh, after applying the, that gate, be, uh, uh, arrive in the zero state. And um, I, um, I don't have the visual representation for this, but the, uh, a qubit that has, uh, that for example, uh, has 75% chance to be measured as zero and 25% chance to be measured as one, if that is sent through such a gate, it will then have 25% to be measured as zero and 75% to be measured as uh, one. So these uh, uh, gates can be uh, uh, shown in what we call a quantum circuit. And this is again, similar to how um, classical, uh, very low level computing is working. We just uh, have uh, information flowing from left to right and we apply gates and um, changing the, uh, or applying gates changes the status of the qubit. And in the end, we can measure it. For example, here we have uh, qubit zero, which is initially in the zero uh, state. And then uh, the poly X gate is applied. And the result is that the qubit will, uh, uh, with 100% certainty be in the one state, which we also call on. And then if you measure it, it will uh, show uh, that it is uh, uh, on. So the um, uh, the question here, uh, if quantum gates change the probability that the qubit is in a certain state, um, yes, that is indeed more or less true. The the gate change uh, uh, the gate changes the probability of the uh, of of a qubit. That is uh, um, that is correct, and that is also very relevant for um, the the last part of what I'm uh, going to uh, talk about. Because with probabilities we can we can work. Um, so this is this is a very simple uh, circuit. Um, we have much uh, much more um, uh, uh, examples, and I will uh, quickly show a few. Um, as a Java developer, um, you can uh, play with uh, uh, Strange, the uh, quantum uh, computing simulator that uh, um, I'm uh, authoring. And you can use the visualization uh, using strange effects, which uh, depends on strange and which uses Java effects to visualize quantum circuits. I'm also working on a drag and drop uh, editor, which is uh, um, uh, working for some basic gates, but not yet for everything. And it's then real time updating uh, the results. Uh, and the samples uh, that uh, are discussed in the book are um, also on GitHub on uh, uh, this uh, URL. All of these projects are open source, so um, uh, no. Uh, um, no dangerous uh, uh, things uh, uh, there. So um, I will show, uh, if I know where, um, I will show a few samples um, just to give the impression because we only discussed the um, uh, X, the poly X uh, gate. Um, and uh, it will um, help if I can show the code for that, how you uh, create it in, uh, in a Java application. Um, <clears throat> I hope this is uh, uh, readable uh, to everyone. Yeah, it's okay. Um, okay, great. <laughs> so 
Um, this is the uh, this is how you get uh, uh, started with uh, uh, quantum computing uh, using a uh, uh, strange. I got a question about the uh, uh, bracket, and so I'll I'll answer that. Um, we first create a quantum compute uh, quantum execution environment, and uh, uh, this is actually an interface provided by Strange, and it has a number of implementations. So we start with a simple quantum computing execution environment. And actually, this is already um, uh, uh, it's already a spoiler because this means that uh, there are different execution environments. So the concept of Strange is you create your program and then you run it on uh, on an execution environment. And this is called a simulator because it's going to simulate uh, a quantum computer. But you can also um, create your own execution environment and run your application there. It can be in the cloud or it can be on real hardware. Um, I'm working on a few integrations with uh, um, real hardware, um, <clears throat> but I need uh, more time for that. But the the great thing is that the application that you write uh, will be working on uh, on real hardware. For now, it's all going to work on the quantum uh, uh, simulator that comes with Strange. But uh, your application should not uh, uh, be modified to run another because we simply use basic gates, and all those real hardware uses the same set of uh, uh, gates, more or less. Um, we all know um, that standards are so great. We create a program where we, uh, <clears throat> where we want to process uh, one qubit only. Um, and we create a step uh, that, uh, uh, yeah, a step can contain one or more gates on, uh, on qubits. And uh, we add the uh, X gate, the poly X gate, which is the NOT gate to qubit zero. We add this step to the program and we run the program in our simulator and we got the result back. And the result is uh, uh, contains uh, an, uh, an array of uh, uh, qubits, in our case, only one qubit, qubit zero. And then we measure the qubit and only at this moment, the system is measured. So at this moment, uh, we lose any superposition state that we uh, might have had and we get back a classical state. And then we print the value. And then here you see renderer.render program. The renderer is uh, using StrangeFX to render the uh, uh, application. So um, if we um, run the um, if we run the uh, application, you see that uh, uh, I'm running from uh, NetBeans. By the way, you see that, uh, uh, I hope you can see the, 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 the visual uh, uh, result, which is the, um, the, uh, the, the picture that I showed on the, uh, on the slide uh, before. So this is the X gate um, that was added and the result is um, on. And you see here value is zero. This is because uh, this is what's uh, being printed here. We started with a qubit and if we start a qubit is always in uh, the value of one. So let me just, just for the fun, um, uh, apply another um, uh, step. So we call uh, uh, step, step two is a new step. Um, by the way, you can uh, combine, so this is very um, verbose, but you can also um, uh, do it in uh, one line. But I think for um, explaining what I'm doing, it's often uh, easier to, uh, so we can add multiple gates uh, in one step, for example. But, what we are going to do here um, is um, adding another gate, uh, whoops, but to the same qubit because we have only uh, one qubit. So um, if this was a real conference, I would uh, now award the prize for the one who would um, guess the result. The value is still one and the qubit is still one. So um, why did that happen? I added a second uh, uh, step. Yes, but I forgot to add this step to the program. So I can uh, add, so actually I should use the add steps uh, here. So running this again, and I'm pretty sure that now we will see the, um, uh, that the value will now be uh, zero because we um, added it, uh, uh, we added uh, uh, two uh, gates, so we inverted this bit uh, twice. So that is that is uh, uh, briefly how you uh, create uh, um, uh, applications using a, a, a strange. Um, 
there's uh, uh, more examples, for example, uh, BB48, uh, which is uh, um, uh, which uh, deals with uh, uh, quantum uh, key distribution, which uh, um, helps you creating a, a safe. So, so if you want to be um, safe from uh, uh, in case quantum computers can crack the RSA keys, then uh, the quantum key distribution is uh, one of the things that uh, uh, that you can uh, uh, use. So it will create it will talk between uh, two parties, um, Alice uh, and Bob, and uh, they will uh, negotiate uh, on a secret key uh, in a secure way. And uh, um, the algorithm that's uh, uh, used here is uh, well shown here with uh, uh, simple uh, gates. So this is still a very simple uh, program. But again, and then uh, we're going back to the slide. Um, again, that was low level. And um, uh, we're going, uh, 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 there are much more samples, but uh, I think I'm going to run out of time otherwise. So I'll, I'll skip those. You can, you can uh, look them, some are documented and others are not, but um, um, uh, well, you can, you can just try an experiment. That's uh, the best approach, I think. So um, when we talk about classical computing, we don't talk about gates. And we do know that in the end, our uh, Java code is uh, um, implemented by uh, yeah, gates that are applied to, to bits, but we don't uh, see them. And I believe that similarly, um, in quantum computing, you, you should be able to apply quantum uh, uh, algorithms without uh, um, uh, looking at the gates. So, uh, if, 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 if you do that, you as a software developer, you can focus on the problem that you need to solve without worrying about how that is implemented at a low level. Uh, having said that, um, especially in this uh, uh, phase of quantum computing, it, it definitely helps if you have some understanding uh, on how quantum computing is working, uh, because that will help you to understand that this part of my application might benefit from a speed up by a quantum computer. And this part is definitely something that um, is not applicable to quantum uh, computing because a quantum computer is not going to solve all your problems. But it's actually similar to, um, to how classical uh, 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 software developers are working. You don't need to understand how um, a binary search algorithm is working, but if you have some understanding about it, you will be able to choose the best algorithm for um, uh, for a given uh, uh, for a given situation, um, or you um, you don't need to know how the Java collections are implemented, but if you know some of the background there, then you know that um, the, uh, that that uh, that uh, uh, an array list and a linked list each have their uh, pros and cons. So it's uh, more or less the same with uh, quantum computing. So you don't need to know it, but it can give you an advantage. And in the uh, uh, strange, we have uh, uh, high level and low level uh, uh, APIs. The low level APIs, which uh, I just uh, uh, showed, use all these gates to create, a, 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 which you can use in, 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 in a quantum program, but you can also use the high level API. And there you just call, for example, uh, uh, methods like a random bit, and this is going to give you a random, uh, real random bit. Uh, so that's another advantage of quantum computers. It, it can be real random. So uh, all the um, random number generators that uh, are uh, used in software are uh, fake, unless you have some hardware device uh, uh, based on uh, thermal or um, uh, uh, external sensors and so. But uh, uh, getting real uh, random value is also something that quantum computer can do. Uh, you can search through lists if you provide a function that uh, uh, that deals with what element of the list uh, you are searching for, um, and you can factor uh, uh, integers. Those are a number of uh, uh, high-level uh, quantum APIs. And uh, um, if I uh, quickly go back to um, uh, to Strange, you see that there's a, a package uh, uh, Strange algorithms classic. Uh, and this is where the um, where the classic algorithms are. For example, uh, the search here is uh, uh, is something that will, uh, uh, if you look at the method signature, this is not containing any quantum uh, hocus pocus, but the underlying implementation 
is going to uh, invoke uh, search probabilities, which is, uh, um, and here you see it here, we are creating uh, uh, quantum uh, uh, applications. Uh, uh, quantum quantum circuits. We create an oracle. So this, is, by the way, has nothing to do with uh, uh, Oracle, the the company. <laughs> this is a, a a quantum concept that I'm not going into uh, detail uh, now. And for example, there's also the uh, Q factor here, which is uh, um, if we. Um, I think I can. Um, uh, do I have? Okay, a quantum factor. So I can. I can run that application, I can at least show the, the code for it. Um, so this is an application that will just call the, uh, the high level uh, strange API, it will call Q factor, and it will give, uh, it will try to factor uh, 15, which is, uh, um, uh, which should not be extremely hard, but you might be uh, surprised. Um, this is going to uh, um, yeah, it's hard to explain without going into detail what is happening here. But um, uh, the system will probably pick a different number because it's uh, picking a random number. And then uh, uh, no, I'll, I'll stop it and I'll run it again. Hopefully, it will. Uh, it needs a seed, sort of a seed first to um, to talk about uh, this. Okay, yeah, that is it. Work better. So what you see here is it's already it's saying calculate uh, the periodicity uh, of a function. So it's not uh, um, going to use the uh, original. Uh, it's not going to solve the original problem, but it's going to solve a different problem, calculating the periodicity of a function. Um, it's even uh, slower than normal. But uh, yeah, I I found out that. Uh, ah, that I'm running two uh, things. That when I do when I'm doing presentations, that uh, things uh, might even be uh, slower. So yeah, so this is it's factor fifteen in one and five, which is uh, one and fifteen, which is uh, uh, well maybe too uh, too easy. So let's do another one. Meanwhile, I can answer the question: uh, uh, What is needed for? Um, running uh, strange on real hardware. Well, most of the hardware, for example, Qiskit and the AWS Bracket have an API, which you can use to um, send um, uh, uh, circuits uh, to. So what uh, what need to be done is in a strange, where we have the um, uh, execution environment. Um, so the quantum execution environment, this is a, a, an interface which need to be implemented so that it goes to, uh, so it, it has a run program here and that needs to, um, to translate the uh, Java application, uh, sorry, yeah, the, the, the circuits, which are uh, steps into a format that's understood by the uh, other, uh, um, uh, by the real uh, hardware. And there are some, um, some uh, quantum assembly standards. So, okay, again, it, uh, factor it in uh, one and fifteen, so let's let's just believe that. So that that is uh, um, uh, uh, that is something that you have to do if you want uh, um, to talk to real hardware. Uh, Strange is going to um, decouple your program in different steps, and those steps are um, uh, consisting of uh, uh, gates, and most external um, applications are understanding uh, one way or another uh, how these uh, uh, gates work. So some even accept uh, uh, JSON uh, format and that's, uh, oops, now I'm uh, executing the wrong thing. Some are accepting JSON. So we just have to send the correct uh, um, uh, uh, format to those hardware uh, things. So let me, um, because I'm behind the hour. So, so the, um, yeah, what you saw here is, uh, um, uh, you might wonder, I spoiled it already, but are, am I using a quantum computer? No. And it will take many years before quantum computers will be powerful enough so that we can um, do something um, extremely useful. I am, I'm personally optimistic that we will be able to do some something cool uh, uh, in, in the next few years. 
but um, we won't uh, solve the uh, protein folding problem, for example, or we won't crack RSA in the next uh, few years. Um, but that does not have to stop us from working on it now because we know the basic laws and, um, and we can emulate uh, uh, the quantum algorithms. And that is actually what we're doing here. And uh, that is also uh, by, by having this distinction between the high level and the low level uh, APIs and then having the quantum execution environment dealing with executing the low level gates. Um, this abstraction, and, and that's again, one of the great things of Java, allows us to um, allow developers to create applications. And because the set of gates that we use are the same as the set of gates on the hardware, it's just a matter of wiring those uh, uh, together. Well, just a matter of, uh, I think the, the main problem that I personally see now is that, um, um, yeah, you need an account on the quiz kit. And so, so um, you need to do some remote invocations. And I'm not sure how open that uh, those uh, cloud quantum providers want to have their systems. That's something that uh, um, needs to be seen in the future. Um, but emulating uh, quantum computers is, is it's what we currently do. And you saw that um, the emulator uh, that we have is extremely slow. Uh, it's much slower than if you would uh, solve the problem in a classic way. So then why does it make sense? Well, because a quantum computer will do things much, much faster uh, uh, than, than a classical computer when, uh, I mean, things like uh, um, exponential modification, uh, what we use for the integer factorization. But in order to, um, but we, we cannot, um, uh, we have to simulate our qubits with existing uh, classical bit. And uh, that is done by uh, using linear algebra. As someone said uh, uh, earlier, um, the gates, uh, change the probabilities uh, of a qubit. And um, that then comes down to uh, matrix multiplications because the status of a qubit uh, is uh, kept in a vector uh, of a dimension two. So how likely will it be measured zero? How likely will it be measured one? And all those gates are just uh, matrices applied to uh, the vectors. And uh, a system with uh, three qubits is represented by a vector of eight elements. So you need eight by eight matrices if you uh, want to do some processing. And it quickly grows, uh, uh, that, that's gonna, that's, if we have uh, um, uh, 10 qubits, you already need multiplications with 1024 by 1024 uh, matrices. And that is the, uh, the, bottom the, the, uh, the bottleneck of current uh, um, quantum computer simulators because well, the advantage of the real quantum computers is also the thing that makes, uh, uh, makes it hard to uh, simulate them in a uh, performant way. To be honest, that's, that, that's fine. I mean, if we, uh, if we can show that uh, um, uh, if, if, if the algorithm works with a small number of qubits, then uh, it should work too with a large number of qubits once those are available. But this brings us to, um, uh, uh, well, actually back to Java. So um, quantum computing really relies on the matrix multiplications, which is extremely CPU intensive. And also the memory layout is, uh, uh, is, is very important. And um, I did some experiments with uh, uh, the uh, Java uh, uh, records, um, which provide a better uh, memory layout um, because you don't have the object um, 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 uh, wrapping uh, at the same uh, uh, memory. So that might provide uh, uh, an improvement, but uh, it comes at a cost because with uh, matrix uh, uh, multiplications, you typically um, need to allocate lots of uh, new uh, uh, values and the allocations uh, overhead um, almost completely destroys the benefit that we have with uh, uh, records. So we need something more. We really need um, vector optimizations and that is uh, hopefully um, uh, well coming um, soon in one of the Panama uh, uh, drops that um, I hope will find their way into the JDK. It's an area that I recently started to investigate. Um, I actually have uh, um, just a little bit of uh, uh, time and I can uh, probably show uh, increase the font size here. Um, Maybe also with uh, command plus or so. 
Yeah, there we go. So this is a, a simple application where in the main application, we create a, a two matrices and um, <clears throat> we uh, fill them with uh, random numbers, complex numbers. Complex uh, number is a class that, um, yeah, that can be either a class or a record. So in the case of a complex a record, um, we define uh, multiplication and addition. But as you can see here, we need to create a new uh, complex uh, number uh, as a result because uh, records are immutable. So we need to do um, lots of allocations when we do uh, when we multiply or when we do uh, additions. And in the second case, so it's now in the comments, we have the uh, uh, the class uh, complex where multiplication is also uh, done. Uh, more or less the same way, but then not with uh, uh, records. So if we um, execute this um, uh, first with, uh, uh, so we uh, we use uh, a matrix of dimension 128, we um, and we do this multiplication and we measure how long it uh, uh, took. Uh, so at this point, I think the, the we will use the uh, complex being a record. So if I uh, compile uh, uh, it, and I run it, and you see, let's run it again. Oh, so it's in that order of magnitude. So with uh, records, um, and if I now uh, change the, so I, I know I should use an ID uh, for this, but I've been working with VI for way too long. If we now, um, use the record, uh, sorry, complex as a class, and we run this, then you see that uh, the difference in time is, uh, well, it's a, it's a bit faster with records, but it's uh, uh, not an order of magnitude uh, faster. Interestingly, the time is going up or down. So um, I have no conclusion yet for this, uh, but, but it's, 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 uh, uh, it's, an, uh, it's an area under um, uh, investigation. Uh, and there are many more areas under investigation because um, one of the things that I'm exploring is that with, uh, um, what if we could uh, split a problem into two smaller problems and uh, use quantum computers with less qubits and then combine the results. In that case, we also need uh, um, uh, more mathematical operations in Java itself. It's, uh, uh, so that's why Java is really um, important. Uh, 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 well, it's really important that Java and quantum computing are um, uh, considered next to each other um, because we really want Java developers to, um, yeah, to, to get the benefits from quantum computing, but then um, they need to work together very well. Um, so the, uh, there was a question, do we have the deterministic calculation uh, with uh, uh, quantum uh, computing. Um, uh, yes, in the sense that the probabilities are extremely deterministic. So um, we know that uh, the end result before we measure it um, is deterministic, but what we measure is non-deterministic. So um, for example, we uh, might um, measure a system with, um, well, let's say, uh, one qubit that uh, uh, has 50% chance to be measured as zero or as one. We know for sure that the probability is 50%, but if we measure it, uh, we have no way to tell whether we will measure uh, zero or one. Um, so that part is non-deterministic. And that's actually, um, well, room for interpretation. The, um, the, the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum uh, mechanics will say that um, when we measure uh, a system it, the wave function collapses into one and only one uh, uh, value. And the many worlds interpretation says that uh, um, the, um, the possibilities, uh, uh, that the reality is then uh, split. So in one world, you would measure a zero and the, in the other world, you would measure a one. It's like the um, Schrodinger's cat uh, um, uh, problem that um, the, the Copenhagen interpretation says that the cat is, uh, once you open the box, is either dead or alive. And in the many worlds interpretation, um, they say that in one world, the cat is uh, alive and in the other world, it's uh, dead. But so determinism is, uh, um, um, yeah, it's an interesting question. Um, <clears throat> so 
So in summary, um, and this is my last slide. So quantum computers, uh, quantum computing really has a huge uh, potential, but it's not yet available. Uh, the hardware is not yet available at a wide scale. But with uh, quantum uh, algorithms and quantum simulators, you can already create, you can already learn about quantum computing now. And uh, one of the great things is that your quantum applications, if you uh, write them, will run on quantum computers when they are available. So you can um, protect yourself or you can already get a leap uh, advantage. And with that, I think uh, um, I uh, can conclude the presentation. And if there are more questions, I'm uh, happy to answer them, of course. Hey, Johan, yeah, thank you so much for this great presentation. I think one of the interesting things about it is because uh, it's like a completely different topic from what people are used about. Uh, so I think that, that that's pretty cool. Um, anyway, if any any person of our audience wants to post a question to Johan, now is the time. Or just, just uh, you can just uh, mute yourself and ask him directly. If not, I mean, Johan is very active on Twitter, so you can definitely reach Johan over there. No one? Okay, I think I think that um, we are fine. I just I just want to say thank you for uh, thank you for writing book. I'm just uh, reading it. I'm halfway through. It's uh, it helps a lot. Cool. Well, if you have if, if a I, if question, I'm still on time for a question. Yeah, yeah, sure. Hey, hey, Johan, uh, Philip here. Um, so, uh, do s would we do we don't have yet the quantum hardware, right? Uh, but we have the the simulators, and um, this thought led me to believe that there are algorithms that actually run faster even when on the simulators. Is that correct? No. On a simulator, uh, the algorithm will not run uh, um, <clears throat> faster because otherwise uh, it would have been a classical uh, algorithm uh, already and then someone would have come up with it. But we actually already do have uh, uh, quantum hardware. Well, we, not as in uh, uh, me uh, or so, but um, IBM has a, a few um, uh, 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 systems, uh, Google has a few systems, and uh, D-Wave, for example, has, but they have a different approach as uh, systems. Um, Honeywell uh, uh, creates them, but they are, as uh, um, someone else mentions in the chat, they're um, not available on a commercial scale. Um, they're uh, basically not available. Uh, uh, well, uh, D-Wave sells systems to, for example, uh, uh, Airbus, um, uh, Google, uh, 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 NASA is also uh, Using a few systems, but they are not um, not um, not available yet uh, to the uh, to the um, wider audience. But uh, what IBM, for example, is doing uh, is they have a, a few quantum systems uh, with uh, five to uh, I think twelve qubits that they make available in a cloud, and you can access them from the cloud. Um, so your uh, your algorithm can then be executed uh, uh, on this um, experimental uh, quantum uh, systems, and so that that was the question. Uh, the other question that I uh, had: what needs to be done so that your uh, application written in Java can run on the real hardware? Well, uh, I need to provide the bridge so that um, I know the uh, protocol that IBM is using using in QuizKit to create uh, uh, quantum um, uh, programs. So. It's just wiring them together, but they do exist, but not yet uh, on a commercial scale. And quick follow-up: do, do we have um, uh, do we know the the overheads? How, how big are the overheads of the simulation? What I'm trying to to infer is if if I write a, a quantum um, if I try to write an algorithm that takes advantage of quantum computing. And I use the Java simulator to test it because it's widely available. Just open a, open JDK, you know. Uh, I write it; it works. It gives the the solutions I'm expecting. Uh, now I'm trying to measure for efficiency and, and times and, and whatnot. Um, is do we have a notion of the the overhead? I guess it's the the graph you were showing uh, at the early start. 
Yeah, yeah. So, so, so the the um, well, the overhead of a of a simulator is always uh, huge. So, typically, if you want to know more about the uh, performance of your um, uh, algorithm, you look at a number of things. For example, uh, the the number of steps, how many uh, steps, and uh, uh, how many gates. So the the depth and the number of gates that is uh, um, that is something that uh, ultimately determines the speed of a quantum uh, computer. Uh, well, actually, three things. So, how many qubits do you need, and uh, how many steps do you have, and how many gates uh, are there in uh, one step? Um, it is something that uh, um, I I plan to add to Strange so that it can uh, show you the um, well the predicted execution time on a real quantum hardware, and that is. Uh, um, uh, it is that is not linearly related to its own uh, output. So there might be an application that uh, in Strange or in any quantum simulator takes uh, much longer than another application, while on a, a real hardware, it might be the opposite. Because uh, um, and, uh, what will go fast in a, uh, uh, in a uh, quantum simulator is, for example, if you have just if you have, uh, three qubits and 100 gates, that will go very fast. But if you have um, 50 qubits and three gates, that will go very slow. And on the real hardware, it will be the opposite because, yeah, well, because of the characteristics of the real hardware. That would be awesome to have to, to motivate uh, what you were saying, that you can write quantum today and use it tomorrow when you have the hardware. Yes, yes. yes. And those metrics are indeed important to, uh, to give, yes. Thank you. Interesting question. Okay, so do we have any more questions uh, left? Well, I think I think not. So um, thank you so much, everyone, for taking some time off and uh, coming to us online to do that that awesome presentation. We hope that you can come to Portugal anytime. Well, hopefully we'll. We'll try to do generation next year as a physical event. So let's see if that's going to work. Um, so the session was recorded. It's going to be available on our, our YouTube, YouTube channel if you want to catch that up later. And please stay tuned to any other further updates for additional sessions until the end of the year. We'll, of course, publish any other session that we'll uh, be presenting on our Meetup uh, event page. So yes, yeah, so thank you so much for, for for everyone that joined today and I hope that you stay safe and uh, see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye everyone. Thanks. Bye. Bye.